Hi, I'm Mr. Simons. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between the movement along the demand curve versus the movement of the demand curve. What is the difference between when we move from say point A to point B on the demand curve versus us moving from D to D1 and shifting the whole demand curve. So we're gonna go through that and we'll look at some examples as well to help with our understanding of this topic. So let's start with a really kind of big picture view here. So what we're saying is that a movement along the demand curve, if I move from A to B in that example over here, that is caused by price. As price goes up, demand will reduce. And I didn't say decrease, and I'm gonna explain why in a second. Or if price falls, Oh, then demand will get bigger. So when we shift along the curve, we have to use very specific language. You know, economics is all about using the right terms and using the right jargon, all that kind of stuff. So when we move along the curve, if we go to a point where demand gets smaller, so say price goes up and demand goes that way along the curve, that is a contraction in demand demand gets smaller because price is larger. Then we think the other way, if price falls, demand will get bigger. And in this situation, because it is caused by a change in price, we have an expansion of demand. So if there's an increase in price, usually consumers are gonna want less, so demand will contract. We say demand will contract, because price started it all. So if we move along the demand curve, it is because of changes in price and we are either gonna see an expansion or a contraction. So important that you use the correct terminology. Okay, so let's display a few of these concepts uh, graphically. So let's start with movements along the demand curve. So not movements of, but movements along. So the first thing we might do is that we know that these types of movements, these movements are caused by changes in price. And this triangle is delta the changes, the Greek symbol for change. Um, so we've got movements along the demand curve are caused by changes in price, not other factors. Okay, so that's helping us kind of think about what's going to happen here. So what we might do now so we've got um, price, quantity demanded, and zero. And what we'll do is we'll now put in our demand curve. Okay, so we've got our demand curve here. And it, please note that it doesn't touch in terms of the axes because we really don't know the exact value for quantity demanded that would lead, that would be existing when price was at zero. We're not quite sure where all these things actually match up. Okay, so what we might do is we'll kind of put in, we'll call this point A, and this can be, so let's say we've got point A, which equates to this price and this quantity. So what we're saying is that if we're looking at movements along the de demand curve, we've got changes in price. So there's really two situations that we need to look at here. So purple will show us the increase in price and blue will show us the decrease. So let's start with purple here. So let's say that, price increases and if this is zero that increases in price result things going this way so let's say that we're now at so let's say we're now at point b which is price two and what we can see is that while price one equated with q1 that price two when this price hits the demand curve consumers now want q2 and if we can see this is zero, so numbers going towards that way are getting bigger, that if we are going this way, we can see when there is an increase in price, that quantity demanded falls. Now we're gonna put in the exact language in a second. So quantity demanded falls. And what we can also do is we can do a little arrow showing that's the movement. So we've got that movement A to B. So let's now switch over to blue. So now we can say, well, what happens if price so let's say that, all right, we're going to sit here now and let's say that's point C and this would be 
price three, that when this price three hits the demand curve, the quantity is now here. And we can see that this is um, sort of further away from zero. It's that movement that way. So as price falls, okay, quantity demanded rises. And again, we can draw this arrow moving that way. So we've got these two situations in terms of our diagram. So what we're saying here is that if we get a situation where there's an increase in price, that quantity demanded falls, that this here, this movement, that this increase in price leads to a contraction in demand. So it's not a decrease in demand because the starting point is price. So one, there's an increase in price. Number two, we get a contraction in demand. And then if we flick over to the other situation, we've got here, so we're saying, okay, so the, the first movement in this situation is that price falls. Okay, well then that's gonna to lead to, that's gonna to lead to an expansion in demand. So that decline in price leads to an expansion in demand. So sorry, that's one and that's two. And these two things really make sense in terms of the law of demand. So we'll just put this in red here. That in terms of the law of demand, that as price rises, the quantity demanded by consumers will fall. So this describes our movements along the demand curve. Remember that it is caused by changes in price. And this is what it looks like. So now let's move on to the movement of the actual curve. So let's say we start at D and then we move to D1, that that is an increase in demand. It's an increase in demand because can you see that quantity along the bottom has got larger when demand shifts. And then if demand goes to the left, to the left, to the, demand goes to the left, that quantity values will be lower. So that is a decrease in demand. If the demand curve physically moves, that is an increase or decrease. And you might say, well, what causes an increase or a decrease? And I would say, of course, great question, that it is caused by factors other than price. So a shift in the demand curve, where the demand curve gets up and walks to the right, or it gets up and it walks to the left, is caused by factors other than price. So they are caused by factors such as changes in the price of substitutes and complements, expectations about future prices, consumer tastes and preferences, income levels, and the size of population and its age distribution. That when these factors change, well then demand will change overall. Okay, so our next situations are no longer about movements along the demand curve. Instead, they're all about movements of the demand curve. So let's start by creating our diagram. So let's say we've got here can have that in red that's not too much of a problem and then we go here so let's say okay so let's say that this is our first demand curve so this is d and that what we'll also say is let's say that this is this is p1 and q1 so this is our starting point here so let's say that there is a so there is a change in a factor that is not price that that is what is crucial about this type of movement is that the reason it moves is not because of the price of the good but because of another factor so let's say here that in terms of this example let's just put this in purple let's say in this example we'll just pick one of these factors so let's say that let's say there is an increase in incomes across the economy let's say that economic conditions are really great uh, more people have got jobs more people have got income income levels in the economy rise so then what we're going to see is we're not going to see a shift along the curve because we're not looking at what happens when price changes what we're instead looking at is a shift of the whole curve so i would label this new curve as d1 that it is a movement this way because this is what describes an increase in demand. And the reason it does is that if we take the same price level and we move it across here 
and we say, okay, well, let's say that's point B, let's say that's point A, that can you see that the quantity demanded will be higher? Q2, and that's an increase in this direction. So what we've got is that an increase in demand due to this factor. So it might seem like I'm repeating this a lot, but that this starting point, so step one, incomes increase in the economy. Step two, there is an increase in demand and that this is not due to changes in price. I just realized that maybe you are unclear about what the symbol Y even means and that Y is the symbol for income in economics. So that this is a movement of the demand curve and that this is describing an increase in demand. So let's flip the situation and then let's look at what happens in terms of a decrease in demand. Okay, so here we are, we're talking about movements of the demand curve. And remember, it's due to factors other than price. So the starting point is not a change in price. So in the previous graph, the one that we just did, we showed an increase in demand. So here, so let's say that this is our starting point and we'll call this, this is our demand curve. And what we'll do is we'll just create this kind of point here in the middle. We'll call this point A. So the point A, we've got this price and this quantity, and this is our demand curve. So let's say that we've got a situation in the economy. We're trying to show this situation. So let's say that, so let's say that consumers expect lower prices in one year, that in 12 months, the costs of all sorts of goods and services will be lower. So what is likely to happen now is that consumers will stop spending and they will wait for those lower prices in one year. So they will reduce their spending and wait for lower prices. So let's call this a purple situation. So we'll say this is the purple situation. So that if they're reducing spending, that essentially what's happening in the economy is that they're going to reduce their demand now because prices won't fall until a year's time. So if we then grab our next demand curve, that our demand curve will fall because people are buying less. And remember, demand is how much goods and services people want at a range of prices. So at a range of prices, they actually want less. So what we can say that if we create this at point B, can you see that for the same price, that the quantity will be lower, that it will actually reduce because consumers aren't spending. They expect lower prices later. So in this situation, this here is our factor and that this leads to that decrease in demand. Okay, so that was our look at uh, a movement along the demand curve versus a movement of the demand curve. So the key thing is a movement along the demand curve that's caused by changes in price. That is the first thing that happens, then we move along the demand curve. If we see a shift in the whole demand curve, so it gets up and moves to the right or it gets up and it moves to the left, that is caused by factors other than price. And for more information about those factors, you can watch the video with that little link above and to check that out. Okay, so any questions, any issues, any concerns that are economics related, please put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.